Hi, I'm Adam Weinberger, a rare book dealer, and today I'm going to show you some secrets of the trade of how to value an old book. So I think it's very helpful to begin with an instructive example. Uh, this is a book uh, from the 18th century. It's in its original marbled boards. Uh, you can see it's quite dry on the spine and it's missing a little bit on top. Uh, the edges of the paper are uncut, uh, which is generally quite desirable. And uh, the book itself is uh, The Constitution of England. Uh, it's published in London in uh, 1775. Uh, so already I'm thinking it's close to the uh, uh, 1776 uh, miraculous year in America. Uh, and uh, it's got an interesting book plate and some inscriptions we'll get back to. Uh, so uh, let's uh, go see how we start looking up the value of the book. Uh, so generally, dealers will immediately hone in on a few things like the rarity, uh, the completeness, uh, the desirability uh, of a book. And uh, one of the uh, best sites uh, that's really transformed the rare book market in recent years is a site called Rare Book Hub. Uh, it's a subscriber site, uh, but it gives uh, actual uh, records of copies that have sold, uh, usually at auction, sometimes from old dealer catalogs. but incredibly comprehensive and they keep adding to it all the time uh, and almost every dealer and auction house that I know uses it uh, to see the prices of previous copies. Uh, as a subscriber you can uh, go into the site here and we'll just type the book The Constitution of England in London 1775 Constitution England, London, 1775. And I have not looked up the book yet or done anything so this is the first time. And we're going to search here, uh, and we can see right away, we're going to just check the author here. It's Jean-Louis Delhomme. Uh, it's the exact same author, and you can click through and see what copies have sold for. Uh, and then we want to compare uh, the edition and the general condition of the book. Uh, so this is one of the records, uh, the Constitution of England. Uh, it doesn't give too much. Uh, it says the bindings beginning to separate. It's got some issues, condition issues. Uh, but generally, it looks complete, and it's astounding. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is something terrible about the state of the antiquarian book market. In uh, 2014, uh, this book was offered at auction uh, for two to $300, $200, an estimated price. It actually sold for only $23.50. Uh, that is heartbreaking uh, just to think you could buy a book at auction from 1775 on the Constitution. Uh, for 20 something dollars. Uh, let's not take that as a singular record. We can see some others here. Uh, and I'm going to uh, narrow it down by also putting in the um, author here. And uh, uh, that seems to be the only copy uh, in the records uh, right now that I see here. Uh, there seems to be a lot of them that sold, but actually, as a single book, uh, that's the only one of the records. It doesn't mean uh, that it's extraordinarily rare or anything like that. It may be too low value these days to make a lot of uh, auctions, which tend to uh, want uh, finer and finer material. So that's one way we can look up uh, prices of books that have sold at auction. There are some other very good sites online. Uh, these are general retail sites. There's one called uh, via Libri, which is one that I like to use because it's a, like a meta search engine and very comprehensive. And again, I will just type Constitution uh, England 1775 and uh, Lome. And we'll see if there's any price at books that are available online. Uh, that are being sell, sold, and uh, I'll just check the spelling on that. Of course, I made a mistake. <laughs> you always have to spell things correctly if you want accurate results. Uh, so let's try again. Did I make another mistake? Constitution, looks like, oh, it's England, not England, of course. Uh, and here we go. And uh, here are some copies of the book itself. Uh, there is an earlier edition, so we don't have the first edition of it. Uh, here is a copy of it online being sold uh, by a colleague in London, an excellent colleague, Peter Harrington Books. Uh, and I'm going to click through uh, to see their exact uh, edition. So 
here is their copy. It's being offered uh, for sale for $996. Uh, and uh, that is the exact issue. First edition in English of a Swiss-English political theorist. Uh, his loan's favorable assessment of the liberties latent in the British Constitution. Uh, so we're not going to get into the history of the book or its importance uh, in law or anything like that. In this video, this is strictly for uh, learning uh, some of the sites to give a quick valuation of the book. Uh, you can also click through here. It says there's 30 used copies. I don't know how accurate that is. And I will price order them to see uh, if we can find some other copies being sold. Uh, there's a 1792 edition for $731. Uh, there is another copy of our book, the 1775, offered for $551. Uh, and we can scroll all the way down uh, to see if there's any other 1775 ones. There's a Dublin issue from the exact same year, $260. Uh, and we continue down. So again, uh, it takes some exploration. It actually clicked through to another site called Abe Books, uh, which is an, another good retail site. But again, I like to use Via Libri because it's a more comprehensive database and includes a lot of other databases under its umbrella. Uh, here is a 1789 edition, slightly later for $150. So there are lots of copies. It appears to be a frequently reprinted book. Um, uh, so uh, not rare in the market, which explains uh, its rather low prices at auction, where it got practically nothing and uh, copies, uh, you know, starting uh, in the low hundreds of dollars up to $900 online. Uh, but again, we want to match the exact edition and everything like that. Uh, after uh, we get a sense of their auction and uh, retail prices on some of these sites, uh, we can also look up uh, some of the book's rarity on sites uh, to see how widely held it is institutionally and things like that. Uh, a site that a lot of dealers use is OCLC, or First Search, but there is an, a, a relatively equivalent site that's more widely available for public use, uh, and that is WorldCat. Uh, there are some errors in the database, but it's pretty comprehensive in terms of the number of copies uh, that. Uh, are held by institutions. And here we can type in uh, constitution again. Uh, Loam 1775. And let's just search. And uh, there were some Dublin editions and things like that. But uh, here we go. And you can click through and it's showing uh, very quickly uh, on the left here without uh, clicking through all the individual uh, databases that there's at least uh, 16 copies of uh, both the Dublin and London editions uh, in libraries. So it's a relatively uh, easy to find a copy of this in the library. So we have a sense of value now from the auction databases like Rare Book Hub. Uh, we've looked on Via Libre. And we also looked on worldcat.org, and we see that uh, it is not particularly rare in institutions. Uh, so uh, that gives a sense of the price. Now, the other thing we want to do here is look more thoroughly at this particular copy, just to make sure there's nothing special about this copy which could raise the value, because inspecting an individual copy is particularly important. So I'm going to shift back over here uh, to uh, the... Uh, book plate and the inscription. Uh, I love this uh, book plate. It's a nice uh, late 18th century, early 19th century book plate of uh, two chained monkeys, an armorial book plate here. Uh, one of the first things, uh, not one of the first things, one of the important things we have to do also is we have to check what we call the provenance of a book. Who owned it? Is there any evidence of ownership? And is that ownership uh, important in telling the story of the book? Because uh, booksellers today uh, want to tell stories about their books uh, and interesting stories about particular copies, whether they were owned or inscribed by somebody, certainly raise the value of the book. So I always check uh, the book plates here uh, very carefully. It's very easy to type in that particular name. It's in a calligraphic hand, Saint 
Andrew uh, St. John of Bledsoe. And we're just going to do a quick uh, Wikipedia search of that. And uh, that pops right up. St. Andrew St. John, 14th Baron jo St. John of Bledsoe. Uh, and it says right here, he was an English politician who sat in the House of Commons from 1780 until 1806 when he inherited a peerage. So that's quite fun. We have a copy that belonged to an English politician who was sitting in the House of Commons uh, during the period even when, uh, you know, uh, the Revolutionary War, when America uh, wrote the uh, Constitution. So uh, it's interesting that it's a nice book on the Constitution of England itself. Now, uh, getting to the inscription, which is very important uh, to study closely here, and it's what makes this particular copy uh, quite fascinating, because as I'm reading it through here, uh, first of all, it's dated 1776 here, uh, but what is particularly unusual and interesting is uh, it seems to be a list of people who have had the book and passed it on and read it, so uh, almost like a lending library sort of thing, but this is not a library copy. It was a personal copy uh, belonging to that uh, member of parliament. Uh, and what's, of, uh, what's particularly unusual now as I go through it is it's actually a list of women who have borrowed the copy. I don't see a single man on this list here. It says November the 1st sent, uh, if I can read it quickly, uh, sent to uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Heatherson uh, and then Mrs. Stevenson received the book on November 5th and then she sent it to Miss uh, Manley on November 19th, and Miss Manley sent the book to uh, Lady uh, Robinson on December 2nd, uh, Lady Robinson, and then Lady Robinson sent it to Lady John Day. And the list goes on and on here uh, of nothing but uh, a list of women who have read the book or lent it, even lent it to their quarterly meetings, uh, uh, it says, and Mrs. Mansa. So that, that is particularly unusual, actually. That is not something I've ever even seen in a book, a list of women readers <laughs> in the uh, uh, 18th century, and particularly lovely in the year 1776, who have borrowed a book on the Constitution uh, and to read, of course, and to educate themselves. Um, and uh, probably with all of the events uh, going on in the international stage, and in America, that was of particular interest to them. Uh, and in the book trade today, uh, you know, uh, books associated with women, things that tell a story about women and reading in the period are particularly interesting and sought after. So this is quite a special copy now that I look at it. Uh, and it deserves uh, some further study. So I'm going to say right off the bat that uh, this is not uh, a book that's probably in the lower end of the uh, uh, range of prices we saw in the couple hundred dollar range or something like that, because it has some very unique aspects to it that, again, tell a story about the book. So we're not just selling the book itself, which is rather common in commerce uh, and institutionally, but if I can write this up in an interesting way uh, to, uh, you know, highlight the readership in a women's circles in the period, and maybe I'll investigate some more of the names of those books. I could, you know, do research that could raise the value, you know, closer towards the uh, $800,000 range. I don't know at this moment, uh, but something on that order, perhaps. Uh, so uh, that is the story of the Constitution of England and some of the websites where you can start uh, to uh, look up books. So thank you again uh, for tuning in to learn some of the techniques we use to value old books. I hope it was helpful. Um, of course, I understand how complex it can be to value an old book as well as a larger collection. And naturally, uh, there are uh, many subtle things that are uh, in old books which can significantly uh, change the value and may not be obvious to a novice. Uh, so it's always good to check with an expert. Uh, you can easily contact a local member uh, in his specialty of the ABAA, of which I'm a member. Uh, that is the Antiquarian Booksellers Association of America. 
It's one of the premier organizations of rare book dealers, and uh, my colleagues are very friendly and often very happy to help. Uh, additionally, you're more than welcome to uh, reach out to me. I do my best to offer free uh, evaluations by picture, uh, through photos, by, uh, by text, or by email. Uh, and naturally, you're free to call me. All of that information uh, is at the end, or look me up on my website. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, subscribe. I'll put up more videos about uh, the antiquarian book trade, uh, you know, researching, appraising old books, and uh, some uh, adventurous finds. So thank you so much.